All right, we live. All so right. good afternoon. How you doing today, Dan? Doing good, man. Just just trying to get it together here, but I'm doing well. Understand. Well, it's July the 12th, Sunday, uh, another edition of our Soapbox Sunday. Uh, as you know, I'm the host, Cool C the One. Got Dan in the house. Looking fly as ever, looking healthy. So man, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we got quite a few things to talk about today, but before we get into any of that, I wanna send a quick shout out to um, one of our, me and you both, uh, right. one of our favorite uh, uncles. Uh, we're in remembrance of him today, July the 12th, mm -hmm. uh, 1966, uh, was the date of birth, but our uncle Kenny, uh, which we could spend probably a whole podcast talking about that that guy and uh, his so many loves and things that he uh, enjoyed in life uh, from from his uh, infatuation with cookies. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> who know him know he loves some sweets, cookies, cakes, uh, piece of poplar's pizza, that deep dish seafood pizza. Every time I see or even hear about one of those, I have to think about him. And then some of the things that he's also famous for is uh, on the holidays, he gonna come through, and I may have mentioned it on the previous podcast, uh, he'll come through mm -hmm. with a trunk full of Tupperware so that he can make sure he get to go place at every stop he make on any and every holiday. And then he also, not sure if he was the one that introduced us to it, but I know that's where I'll uh, sharpen my skills and playing a game called 10 grand. And I'll even admit that we uh, so lifted one day, faded or whatever the word you want to use. We are just enjoying ourselves, uh, some family members, and we even started playing jacks. Yes, I'm talking mm -hmm. about jacks with the little ball and, and the little <laughs> jacks. And, you know, yeah. we used to get into all of that. But uh, just couldn't start the day off without talking about him. Most definitely miss him and love him. And just wanted to give a shout out. Uh, continue to rest in power, not peace, baby. Uh, so with right. that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I know we usually like to talk about the corona numbers and give our listeners an update on that. Mm -hmm. So if you're ready. I'm ready with that. So uh, the corona is definitely not looking good. I would say we are wow. moving up again. Um, we had an additional 3,462 cases from last week and uh, 96 people died last week in Michigan. These are Michigan numbers and these numbers come from um, the Michigan, the state of Michigan website. That's where I pull all the numbers from that I talk about on here. Okay. Uh, the U.S. cases went from 2.56 million to 3.2 million. Um, and we are currently sitting at 134,573 uh, lives that has been lost by the coronavirus uh, so far. But like I said, in Michigan, we had a daily case average of 390 across the state. So that's what we're looking at right now. But again, almost 100 people last week were lost from the coronavirus and uh, 34, just over 3,400 new cases. So that's what we're looking at in wow, the state wow. of Michigan. Those are some high numbers. They are. Uh, but the, I will say Florida broke the uh, record for numbers cases in a day. Um, you know, I think they had about fifteen thousand or something like that in one in one oh, day. Oh. So, yeah, Florida. I think sitting at in the last week, they got sixty three thousand eight hundred and ninety four cases. So they they uh, major major numbers down in Florida, uh, Texas. Looking at in the last seven days, they got over fifty eight thousand. In California, fifty-seven thousand over the last seven days. Wow! So this thing is not planned, folks. Uh, I'll, I'll continue to say it. I don't care. I'll say it every week. You know, 
continue to be safe out here, everybody. You know, wear your mask. I'm, I'm out here a lot and people aren't wearing the mask. Um, I'm sure many seen and we'll, you know, talk about it some more throughout the podcast. But now here in uh, Michigan, at least in Metro Detroit, uh, it's mandatory going into, you know, any restaurant or any, you know, public place, mm-hmm. uh, retail stores, you have to have a mask. Right. And just yesterday, I was in a fast food restaurant and someone walked in and didn't have a mask and, and was asked about it. Um, but y'all thought it was interesting. The comment was, well, I'm only going to be in here for a few minutes. I said, well, how many minutes did, do you think it take to either can, you know, right. get the virus or to spread it? <laughs> Mm-hmm. And normally, I don't even get into conversations in public that don't pertain to me. I'm not that type of person. But I just, you know, out of my frustration, like, look, man, you know, I got on the mask, so I'm not really worried about it. But how dare you be so, I like to say, uneducated or ignorant to the fact that, look, right now, it is what it is. You got to wear the mask. Just uh point blank, put the mask right. on, whether you like it or not, or don't go no place. Get your mm-hmm. meals delivered, uh, work from home, do whatever you got to do. But the fact that you can't go out in public and do exactly what you want to do, how dare you think that you and nobody else deserve the right to do that? So, But I'll leave that alone. Uh, that's not Keep really what the, today is about. Uh, but we just really want to hit on and talk about how serious it is to continue to stay safe. Um, you know, don't listen to the politicians. It's financial for them and, and things of that nature. We talk about your safety and, and your loved one's safety, because even though you think you might be invincible, you can spread it on to some other people. So if you're not going to wear the mask and you're not going to be safe, stay away from people you care about. You know, if you live by yourself and it's just you and your cats, Fine, but if you if you got to go visit your mother, or you got to go visit any other relatives or grandparents, you know, do it for them if you're not gonna do it for yourself. That's not what people are doing though. We're still out here, and they, they and they don't believe, you know, that the coronavirus is that bad. I keep hearing people say it's a hoax, or it's just the flu. It's just the strong strain of the flu. It's that bad is to worry about and they not wearing masks i think people just care and it, it's a lot of people out here like that so i, I think we people um on the, both sides of the issue as a how it's been politicized and i think it'll change when it gets personal when when people have people close to them or when they have close friends who lose family members you know Unfortunately, that's what it'll take for some people. And you know what? Maybe the mask ain't the only thing that's protecting you. But we know that uh, here in Michigan, we were one of only two states at one point. Us in New York were the only two states that were in the green as far as maintaining and and seeing numbers reduce. And, um, And then things were opened up. And since things have been opened up, we've seen that the numbers have went up. Uh, right. Down in Atlanta, the mayor actually has went back to phase one and they're back to shutdown or on the way to shutdown last report I saw, as well as she had mm-hmm. even contracted the virus. Uh, so, you know. That's not good for business, but it's also not good for people's health. You know, and I think, you know, to take that hit up front is better than prolonging an issue all this time and people constantly dealing with you know, these different shutdowns and, you know, this this hit we take in financially, like it's a financial hit to people and a medical hit to people where people just don't be safe. Exactly. I agree with you. But man, we could, we could talk about Corona all day. Uh, we just like to bring it up at the beginning of every podcast because mm-hmm. we haven't forgotten about it the same way we have forgot about some of the injustice going on, as well as we'll talk about the latest and the, and things of that nature. So um, I know we are gonna try to get a guest on this afternoon, but before we get into that, uh, tell me what's on your mind today. What you wanna talk about? Um, 
obvious lead there was a shooting in Detroit. I want to say, well, I don't even remember. It was, might have been two days ago. On Friday. Two days ago now. Two days ago on Friday. Um, we had a little uprising in the street that didn't last that long. Chief uh, straight out with the video to kind of set everybody straight and give us a perspective of what went on. So knowledge there was a, uh, they were investigating uh, and uh, officers walked up and went to handcuff one guy and another guy goes pot and pulls out a and fires two shots but you don't see this um when it happens so um you know i got people around they didn't see the initial shot place only saw the officer shooting so you know people gathered in the streets and then you know that we had a little situation until the chief came and cleared everything up um what I do uh, appreciate about the situation that he did immediately come and provide the video so that we could see what happened. Um, the offender that they were going after actually did pull out a gun and fired two times the officer and one of the other officers ended up shooting and, and taking the, the young man's But um, no, nobody else luckily get um we're out of control where a bunch of people ended up getting hurt. And hopefully this will be a whole case and not to never linger on. Well, I know I saw some uh, interesting reports on this and I know this was early on, even after mm -hmm. the video by the, uh, the chief that was shared. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, one of the gentlemen said he was a family member, an older brother, other gentleman, and they're still saying that um, they're screaming that uh, unjust happened. And, you know, okay. I, I sympathize with any any family that loses a family member, whether it was, you know, something that we consider to be their own fault. Bottom line is, you know, as we start off talking about a family member we lost and how much we miss and, and enjoyed his company mm -hmm. and how his memory goes on. So. My hats are always off to anyone that loses a family member. Uh, mm -hmm. And without being too judgmental here, looking at the video it is really self-evident. And if I can correct you on one thing you stated earlier, uh, yeah. you said he shot twice at officers. He actually fired four times. Oh, yeah, the two on the ground. He slowed the video yeah. up and showed a little bit more. He was actually mm -hmm. firing. And something that people don't understand in real life uh, when you were in a shootout or you actually take on fire. You know, we, we watch a lot of that in movies and we have that perspective on it. But I will tell you that um, out here in the real world, you know, at one point, the, I, I feel like the last two shots that he fired off were just out of, you know, he already had the gun in his hand. He was trying to flee and shoot with his, uh, the gun, be pointed behind him and not even looking, just trying to get away because as soon as he pulled that weapon out, there is actually body camera footage, the body cam from the officer that was standing to the furthest right for people mm -hmm. who've seen the video. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the officer who was the first one to shoot the, uh, the, the, the gentleman. And at that point, he still let off two more rounds after he had been hit. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, not knowing where he was shooting at that point and how that officer didn't get shot in the face or head in the start right. of that video is, you know, unbelievable to me. But I feel like from what I seen on there that it was just, uh, again, I feel mm -hmm. sorry for the family and I, I hope they can get the closure that they need. But right now, unfortunately, they're saying that, uh, they feel like the video was edited in some type of way. The body camera? And again, I go back, to, uh, I, again, I go back to TV and, and, and movies. Sometimes I don't think we really have a true perception of how things in the real world play out. Uh, I don't think that the BPD uh, in this particular situation would have had time because they released this video the same evening which I was really impressed with, uh, or later on in that evening. So to say that they manipulated the video, 
video in some way, shape, or form. Um, I'm like, are you suggesting that they, you know, edited the video to make it seem like he pulled that gun out and fired it? What part of it, you know, I would have to question that. But again, families mourning, they're hurt. You know, they they didn't expect that young man to not come home that, that night. And those emotions are raw. It's just me looking at that video, I'm really confused as to how they think there is some type of malicious part on the police officers that defended themselves and others. Because if you look at the video, there was a young lady with them who was just out of camera range, who could have easily been hit. It was the gentleman who was on the ground, which he was already handcuffed because that's who they were looking for, if I'm not mistaken, as well as there was mm -hmm. people on the other side of those vehicles. So there was a lot of people involved in that scene as well as the officers that all could have been uh, hurt in that situation. So I, I'd like to personally shout out DPD in this situation. I feel like the right thing was done and those guys, uh, you know, the kahunas on them to be able to stand there and maintain their cool and not shoot the wrong person, you know, stop the person who was the threat. Uh, I was very impressed with it. Very impressed. And I'll say that mm -hmm. and leave it at it. What'd he say? We can hear you now. Boy, you look yeah. crazy. Hey, what's going on? I, I know. Man, <laughs> we're looking crazy. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> so, so folks out there, if you if you don't know, we just had a guest jump in. I'm gonna give Dan a chance to introduce hey. this guy. I've been knowing him for a minute. When I say a hey. minute, I'm talking about back, back, way back, too far back, all the way yeah. back to uh, when he was a, a, a young man. Dog, so get this man uh, over there. I'm tripping. Give him an introduction hey. for me, Dan. Yeah, so this is uh, our favorite antagonist, we call him Weave. He always uh, speak his mind, but he speak the truth. So we appreciate him. Absolutely. I'm trying to find some better light, dog. My light is looking crazy. Like. You're good enough. We can see you. Oh, all right, then. Now, what you say about, what y'all talking about the dude who got shot the other day? Yeah. Yes, we were just talking about the guy that got shot yesterday, and uh, or, I'm sorry, on Friday, and his family is saying that uh, the, the DPD manipulated the body camera footage to make it look like what they were showing, and that they were unjustly uh, killed that young man. So what they think they see in here? They don't know how to manipulate no damn footage. I don't know what that was the, the point I made. I, I didn't put it as eloquent as you did, Weavy, but I said the same thing. I don't think DPD has the the capability, and I don't mean that in a in a bad way, but to be able to manipulate the footage uh the same evening and put a gun on him that he didn't have and make the gun fire. It's like um I, I don't think they had that type of ability, but I'd love to get your input on it. Tell me what you think about it. <laughs> Somebody told me that him and his man was walking up the street. They see the police. They said his man had a warrant. This is all speculation. I don't know if none of it's true. Uh, the, the other guy had a warrant, and he was firing off a shot to throw the police off so dog could run. Now, if that's true, or even if it ain't true, once you open fire on the hook, you dead. And I don't have sympathy exactly. for stupid. Ain't no sympathy for stupid. That was stupid. So look. Stupid games, you get stupid prizes. My man already had gave up. So where was he going to run to? You know what I'm saying? I'm nowhere for him. That ain't, no, that ain't no deterrent for arrest anyway. That yeah. ain't no deterrent for arrest to pop at the police. And then... A lot of these guys, even the guy at the Wendy's in Atlanta, uh, who ran and they shot him in his back. No, they shouldn't have shot him in his back. But what you think you about to be going to jail for, dog? You ain't about to go do right. no 120 months. You ain't about to go lay down for the rest of your life. You going to jail for the weekend, stupid. <laughs> you ain't, ain't want to do that weekend. 
And that's what I'm saying. So anybody who don't, if you ain't prepared to go to jail, dog, you need to find you something better to do with your time. It's a whole lot of things you can invest your energy in. Because jail come with this shit. I mean, he, he just, and you know, that's a great, it, it, he was doing nothing crazy. I mean, he was drunk driving, obviously. But but, mean, that's the craziest shit you could do. Because who, who knows, knows what else he was doing? Who knows in the drunk driving case? The drunk. Everybody else be dead. That's true. But so he no, wasn't that's a great point. He, he wasn't true to the jail for ways you can get around without drunk driving these days. Take from somebody who's been drunk driving for a long time. He, I have finally learned driving is a privilege, not a right. So exactly. you need to hop great in point. Forward. You need to hop in I can't middle. argue with now. You need to call your favorite cousin. You need to call your side bitch. You need to call anybody other than the person with your kids. And sleeping at Wendy's ain't no That's for real, but I... He wasn't trying to sleep at Wendy's. That's the problem. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. Nah, but... Unfortunately, he took an L he can't come back from. But, you know... Yeah. Smart people learn from their mistakes, and wise people learn from other people's mistakes. So, if you watch, you brought me, up a good point. You brought up a good point, Wavy, and I just want to circle back to it when you said, um, you know, you out here in these streets, and, and you you can't take happen to sit down for, you know, uh, you know what what you say, you know, a handful of months, and ain't like you was getting ready to get 120 of them bad boys. You know, you need to be thinking about doing something else. And I know uh, we all, you know, had our time in the hood and, you know, we know people and we didn't did, we didn't did. But I just want to make sure that, you know, I put light on that for the youngsters out here in the street that think they or want to be gangsters and thugs. If you're not willing to go sit down and I'll say for 50 months, then you need to go do something else. Go get you a job at Wendy's. So you can help that dude that fell asleep in the drive through Maybe you can help him get home safe, but <laughs> stop it. Get off of these streets, man. These streets, you know, they, they made the sidewalks for a reason because the street ain't for everybody. So well, great on. point there, you know, and what's you that? Before you talk about them, somebody got to talk about the plant workers. Because it ain't a drunk, <laughs> it ain't a drunk a motherfucker on the road to the plant workers. Oh, I thought you was talking about that night fight. Nah, I didn't even talk about that because that's just shit that happened between me. Sometimes you can't, sometimes right. you try to tell somebody as best you can with the words you got that y'all ain't getting along and right. sometimes shit just get physical. I ain't got no problem with a little stick. But I'm so talking about these plant workers. If you hit that, uh, it's on uh, Connors and Jefferson. It's a Shell gas station. It's a Coney mm -hmm. Island Park Street. You hit that Shell gas station, boy, you will see 50 of the drunkest auto workers you ever seen in your life. And they all spend and that's been, Huh? I say, and that's been something that in, here in Metro Detroit, I know um, I, I have a long standing uh, uh, history with, with the plant. And that's not me personally working in it, but uh, close family mm -hmm. members and friends for as long as I can remember. And we even joked about it. And for the, our listeners that haven't heard this before, we used to even say that, hey, you know, you can look at when the car was made. Uh, don't buy no car that was made on Friday or one on Monday or after any major holidays. So when you find out the date <laughs> that that car was made, we used to joke about that. And right. that's something that, you know, um, we, we hear the auto plants because right now they're getting ready to expand in Metro Detroit. And uh, I want to just touch on this topic briefly, but I heard so many people in uproar when they said, look, we're going to be doing some extreme drug testing. And I say extreme, and maybe that's not the right word, but we're going to be drug testing. And we don't care if you got a medical marijuana card. We don't care about this, that, and other. You can't come in here. You know, we're not going to hire you in if you own anything illegal. And I just kind of laugh because I think back to what you said. We, well, shit, what, what's the policy once you get in there? Because you can do anything as long as you don't kill nobody or steal nothing. You can stay in them factories. 
You want to yeah. do cocaine off some chick's ass cheeks uh, in the break room? You can do it. You want to get <laughs> drunk to the point where you can't stand up? You can do it. So, yeah, we most definitely ain't in the plant, so I ain't trying to uh, throw no shade, but we can do better. And when I say oh, we, no, I'm a we're working hater. in there. I'm a plant hater. They never let me in, so I'm a hater. <laughs> I can't stand but that I up. But I will say it is the city within the city inside of there, but we you know, we can't yeah. be getting out on the roads unsafe. And, and hopefully y'all, that uh, is some type of precaution in there where we're getting a better product. But that's just been a well, long standing thing. Well, one summer of fun. You said what? <laughs> I said I appreciate Chrysler for my one summer of fun. No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm a hater because the same people at the plant who talking about the young people and, and them not listening to the police and them having a hand and getting killed is the same people who drunk as hell pulling out that shell gas station at 2, 3 in the morning getting on that same road and these the same people on Facebook and Instagram hating on us, on us good unemployment people for finally having a little change. So I don't like none of the plant niggas. I love it. I like that segue. So what are we talking it. about today? Because y'all haters. We not haters. <laughs> yeah. Definitely haters. <laughs> you what got people who ain't never today? had no money in their whole life. They finally get to get fresh. They finally get to get them some J's and some yay. Why they can't have no yays? Listen, and this this where this where we about to go today. <laughs> if you don't have the money for you, and generally, if you own unemployment, you probably don't because it costs like 13, 14 taken. Shouldn't be buying them bitches. Who are you to say what I buy with my money? Somebody who trying to teach a little bit of responsibility. What you mean? You already had your James. You already had your Mavado watch. I don't ever get to get no watch. I can't never get French. I can only really really flex on the ground, bro. I can't never flex. You can flex when you get a job. Why? And this is a job. better job than my job. I can't hear you. I can't hear you buffering. Buffering. That's, that's temporary. That's temporary. <laughs> that's temporary money. Nigga, my life is temporary. Do you watch the news? Okay, so you you live life with no expectations as long as look, I, I look at it like this. If you're Renting your bills paid, then buy what you want. There's mothers out here who can't pay their rent, lights cut off, and then they want to call somebody and need two and three hundred dollars, but they got on new J's. Don't call me for no two and three hundred dollars. Got on new J's. You should have waited on them J's. Cody, can you hear me? Cody, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm giving y'all a chance to go back to no two hundred. I'm not saying me. You know ain't nobody <laughs> calling me for the 200. <laughs> well, what we usually talk about, we just, we, we, we get a little bit outside ourselves within there. But first again, I love it. You know, we, we love the energy you bring today. So thank you for that. Continue. But what we try to do here is we try to uh, generalize for our listeners out there as we continue to grow. We try to generalize. Um, a lot of what we talk about on here and try not to get too specific, but hey, I feel you. Ain't nobody calling that 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 Negro from the two, three hundred because they know the answer. <laughs> no. But this is what I'm saying. I'm only saying that to say this. You got people who ain't never had nothing nice ever. Okay. On your friends list. And I knew that was where you were going no with car. it, so continue. Yeah, they ain't never had no car like that. They ain't never had them shoes. Why can't they enjoy this? They ain't taking it from nobody. It ain't nothing that's to a make great you point. make decisions with your life, dog. That ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. You do whatever you want to do with your money, dog. Because I'm going to do whatever I want to do with mine. I ain't bought no J's with my unemployment money. But I ain't in the J's. But if my man, if he posts a new pair every week, every time he get a check, if he take two, three hundred dollars and get him some J's, that's, that's, fine. that's fine if his bills pay. That ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't my business. That's so, just people mad at other people's business. And then a lot of it is people who only, they only want to be the one who can flex. 
They only want to be the one who can shine. It ain't about that. That you not you not this. You don't care your business and your bills. Then it turn into people business. Either, How? Especially somebody coming for some help and they not being responsible about it. You so know what I learned about you, people? People respect no. Way more than you they think do. they do. They respect no. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Well, I'm going to take resell them jazz. That same 200 you needed, you can resell them jazz online. And they're going to somebody home. else and get that 200. Easy. Not easy, but they go to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But so right why? I'm not hating on you, but what is the... Y'all don't even want us to have it in the first place. Want you to have the 200, the what, the extra $600? The big, the big six oh. I just told you they hating on that right now. They, the essential workers think they should get the 600 because out here putting their ass online, but you sitting at home collecting 600. So they, they feel like... The ass on the line, listen, no, real. They are they are working, you ain't. So they feel like every place they go, they getting the additional exposure. While oh, you no, getting oh, the I, thought, I thought unemployment was my money I'm getting back. Might be. The the record one, not the six hundred. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, there's your money if they giving it to you. Well, ain't I a taxpaying citizen? Out of your employment? No, I'm saying I'm a taxpaying citizen, right? I don't know. Are you? I got W-2s. I pay, they take taxes off my they check. Pay taxes. I pay taxes, too. So should well, I be getting 600 Hey, listen. I, I'll give you something different. I don't know. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I love it. I pay taxes, I too. It. I pay taxes, too. So you think you should get six hundred? Shouldn't I pay taxes just like you do? Hey but you home and you ain't doing shit. So why should you have an extra six hundred dollars sitting hold there? On, hold on, hold on. First of all, first of all, why are you hating on my six? You I'm not hating on your six. six. I'm just saying if I Listen. pay taxes too. If that's your Listen. argument, why I you, six, can, six. you can you can get your six? You might wait. You might make too much to get six though. I don't know how much you make. I, I, I live below the poverty line. I don't give a fuck how much I make. If it's six feet, I want it. Yeah, but you can't get it. First of all, you, you can't get it if you make too much, first of all. I live below the poverty line. I, I make less than $25,000 a year, first of all. Second of all, you can just go outside right now with no mask, no gloves on, just start bumping in the shit. Because all you need is that letter to say you got that <coughs> and you lit. Now, I don't know if it'll cover your monthly nut to get that, but you know that's something you want your financial advisor going to have to work out. Okay. Well, it helps you. So if I can answer my question. Well, you if said I can a jump lot, in here for a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so if I can jump in, because I must definitely like where y'all going with this. So just so our listeners can understand, there's, there's two things I want to point out here. Number one, we was given a, a perspective on you know, his opinion on the on the six hundred dollars and his taxes, and it's interesting on what he feel like, and maybe if he ain't talking about him or whoever, but us as a people, and this is what I want to get into, us as a people and how we spend money, and what we spend it on, in comparison to many other races, and then also want to talk about why aren't we doing more for those people who we know are putting their lives on the line. And I don't necessarily think is the person at Wendy's, like we've said, uh, I don't think it's the person at the home improvement store mixing paint or uh, loading up flowers and, and, and topsoil so you can work in your yard and build a deck. Now, if they want to take money and give it to those people that are out there and saving lives and putting their life in jeopardy, dealing with people who we know had a virus, then absolutely. They need to be getting that money just like uh, they giving out money to people who are unemployed. But before we get into any of that, the first point talking about 
what we should or shouldn't be doing with our money, that's where I like to say that we got to do a better job of educating ourselves because that's a lot of the reason we have the things that are considered to be big issues in our neighborhood. Because people dying over those $200 shoes we're talking about, which is crazy, because they can't get them. People fantasize and want these items because they can't afford them. And that's the American way. We always want something that we can't afford in general. We always looking at somebody else's wealth because there's a lot of it in this country. So shame on anybody for wanting to see what is thrown in their face every day, all day, with the amount mm -hmm. of wealth that's shown. Why can't I look and, fly and shine, you know? So he brings up a great point there. But my question, and, and we can continue on to both of you, like I said, the first one, what can we do to fix that attitude that I want to shine just like everybody else is shining? And why should we want to fix it? And then the next part of it is, how do we educate our people moving forward on how they should be investing their money? And even if we should be doing that, because we make the economy go, but how do we make it go for us? Because it ain't working right now. Ain't no us. I know I said a lot. <laughs> ain't no us. Ain't no we. Just because you black and I'm black, I don't mean you on the same type of time. We ain't no monolith. We ain't, we ain't got the same thing tank going on. So ain't no we, first of all. So first thing you do is stop. So the we is the people in your house, in your immediate family, in your immediate family. Okay, so when, you, so when you say that, how do we, our goal to try to get better, how do we do it as a people? And do you think we where we should be? People. It's, you start in your house. You make sure your son learn about is financially literate. You do it with your son. He tell his friend. You do it with your brother. He tell his friends. You do it with your nephews, your cousins. Don't worry about everybody else. It's too many people. No, I got, I got to worry about everybody else because no matter, hear me out here. So you, you bring up a point. You say, I teach my son. So I teach my son, I educate him, but he go out here and another nigga who haven't been educated, shoot him. I'm still in the same boat as everybody else because oh. we are out here we're out here family doing family. things. <laughs> we out here doing things that we out here doing things that don't get us to where we all collectively need to be. So how do we change the mindset of people to try to move in a better direction as a whole? Because we only 13, 14% of the population. We spend way that more money true. than anybody else. That's but we true. the most that's not we true. can argue that, but we 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 are still a minority in this country. Now, you can't tell me that's not true. You think it's more of us than it is other races? When you keep talking about black, I ain't talking about black. I'm talking about this ain't no this ain't no race issue. This is a class issue. This is a class issue you're talking about. Now, let's stick to the first thing first. If you teach Junior how to be financially literate, it's up to him to be responsible. Just give him the information. If he uses it, he uses it, he don't know. Now, when it comes to threats to his person, I hope at the same time you teach him how to defend himself with and without a firearm. So that was a huge leap from what we talking about, but I feel you. I understand what you're talking about, but yeah, that ain't realistic. So fix the people who have who you have immediate access and influence on. The people who you call and who call you and they answer the phone when you call, you answer the phone when they call. Then the people you start teaching first because they'll go out and teach they people and the people they have access to. This ain't a group thing we do. You work with your people, I'm going to work with my people, and because we two big dogs, we can meet up on our own time and then we can decide what's the next thing we're going to push on the people under us. So you don't think that we as a people, whether it's just a particular age group or whatever it is, should be trying to enlighten and educate any and everybody they come across? Hell no. Everybody ain't worthy of the information. If I tell you where to go, I, mean, I ain't about to drive you over there to get it. 
So, for example, and, and you know, the people that jump on this podcast, whether they agree with everything we say or not, which of course nobody's going to agree with everything. So, the people that <laughs> that 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 are our audience, I'll say, which we have a lot of different people from all different walks of life. You got people who don't know what they don't know. True. And if you're constantly somebody out there that's trying to put education out there for the person that don't care, they're going to turn off the TV or turn the channel, right? Or turn to another podcast. But for the people who are sitting here and taking the time out of their day to listen to us, I feel like I got their ear. So yeah, I'm not going to get to everybody because on this podcast, I'm not going to end racism. I'm not going to end poverty. I'm not going to get everybody rich and I'm not going to hurt nobody. But it's going to be one person out there who I'm going to say something to that they haven't heard that's going to make sense. Or I'm going to give an example of something that they seen and was like, damn, I didn't look at it that way. Because we always can learn and do something better than what we're doing. Now, when you talk about, and I love it because you give your point of view on it, but you can't tell me that somebody ain't never said something to you and you was like, damn, you know what you're right. And you looked at that particular thing or person or topic differently yeah. because of something somebody yeah, said to you, whether it was a close shit. friend or not. Probably it, but he didn't say that shit didn't come out of his mouth, I guarantee you. What? Say he what now? You didn't, he didn't admit somebody else was right. He probably did that shit. No, 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 no. No, he, he didn't admit it. He, I don't have no problem. I've seen him do this on more than, more than once, so I ain't going to let no, you no, say no, that about wait. him. Let's be clear. I am the one I'm talking about. I'm always open to the information. I take information from anywhere. And I ain't scared to ask for what I want to know. I'm talking about this, this we, us, black thing. I ain't with it. The universe got its own ecosystem. Somebody has to lose for somebody to win. Somebody got to get eight for a motherfucker to eat. If, if shit was worth its weight in gold, it'd be a race of people born without assholes. Because okay, somebody so got to lose, dog. That's the ecosystem. The question, is, the question is this. We, we have an issue. We have an issue of people in general and, and within our race who value um, material things to the point where they sacrifice their living conditions for all things. Why do you think that's so? Y'all watch sports, right? Both of y'all. Yep. Deion, Deion Sanders said, when I look good, I feel good. When I feel good, I play good. And when I play good, they pay good. They ain't paid though. I mean that that sounds good if you're a football player, but motherfuckers ain't football players. They it's out here game, working. Dog. It's all a game though. It's all a game. Maybe so. I'll but ask you that if you value materialistic shit, you lose it. That's not true. Because looking the right way can get you in a room that I can't get in, even though I got all the knowledge. Like ain't nobody. Not nobody, but a lot of people, the way you look right now, they mm -hmm. wouldn't think you knew what you were talking about. But if you swear on that camera around your house, then the nigga might have to take you with a little differently. That's true. That's but how true. you look, Wait. how you That's look to stop you from getting in the door. Because I've seen a lot of fools get to mix and mingle with motherfuckers who ain't got no business being around because they look right. That's true, but we ain't talking about that. We talking about yeah, we is because you who you know get shit. you in the dough. Who you know get you in the dough. What you know and how you apply what you know determine how far you go and how long you stay. But you that ain't got shit right. to do with spending money on material you know, that you don't have. You look right way you can get in the right room. It's all a game, dog. Okay, if you spending that money on the right shit, like if you the fucking suit, it makes sense. You said but suit. You don't get J's, wear J's, and lose belts. That ain't getting you in the fucking room. It what on what room is that getting? In? Well, that, that's true. I was about to say that. That depends on the room to get in. 
I would say you this. You're a millionaire who dress like that now. And if you got on a pair of exclusive J's, you could bump into a millionaire here in Las Vegas where I'm at. You could bump into a millionaire at the goddamn Tasty Freeze, and he'd be like, damn, where will you get them J's from? And you like, shit, I got a plug. My man. Man, I need that plug. Shit. You know, you got a gram, let's exchange Instagram. You ain't got to give me your number. I'll hit you with the DM. i let, i plug. You just made a new millionaire friend off your shoe. I've seen this happen before in real life. Just because of how somebody dressed or what kind of weed they smoke. I've seen people smoke a weed and have somebody approach them who they could never get a meeting with because they smelled that person weed. This ain't, this ain't uh, 1842 no more. It's millionaires who live just like me and you. Okay. But most people don't live in Vegas and most motherfuckers in neighborhoods don't have millionaires around asking on the fucking weed smoking. So you sound crazy as hell <laughs> right now. Nah, I don't. Because listen, buddy, hey. if you if the, first you gotta know what room you want to be in, then you gotta figure out how to get to it. Now we get it somewhere. Saying. We get that's it. all I'm saying. So when you, you keep you talking going about down the right a nigga can dress however he wanna dress. How he's dressed don't determine what type of nigga he eat. I see okay. a lot of bad niggas in good suits. Okay. Well, let's get so back to the, the original topic. Yeah, but if you, a, if you a question and you saying a bunch of stuff that ain't got nothing to do with what I. You can buy as many pairs of J's as you want with your unemployment. I don't care if you stay in a abandoned house with no water in. You can do whatever you want to do with your money. It's your money, and it ain't got nothing to do with me. Quit worrying about other niggas' business. That ain't your business. That ain't what I asked you. I'm well, I'll say this on, on that point. So you say, don't worry about what other people are doing. And to a, a degree, I feel you. But when we talk about other people and we talk about, you know, Metro Detroit here, where we are from, born and raised, right. and, and, the, and the issues that we have in our community or in, in the community, uh, you know, I won't say our, I'll say just in the community and right. the lack of moving forward positively as a whole, which in turn takes us back to the type of show that we've been and what we talk about all the time, which is how we don't get treated fairly by authorities and we don't get the right chances and opportunities like other people do. Something as simple as police not happen to live in the city no more. So you got all that revenue that leaves the city and goes out to a suburb even the people you talking about who spend the money on whatever they want to spend it on and do whatever the fuck they want to do with their money, they not doing it within the community that they live in. And That's we're not, not able true. to maintain our, our neighborhoods the way we have in the past. It is true. I'm in the city no, all not. the time and the city look like shit except for downtown. So here's the thing about and, that. First of all, y'all are so removed from the neighborhoods. We do spend our money in the neighborhoods because I'm one of them. I spend my money at Fat Burger. I spend my money at Mays. I spend my money at Jordan, Full Palace, these liquor stores in the neighborhood. I contribute to the 4th of July, even when I'm not home. I contribute to everything going on in my neighborhood, and I ain't the only one. Because sometimes the people who have an event and who ask for contributions, they have to come to me because they don't have no relationships with the other people in the community who do have the money to contribute. Yes, they do, but the problem is it ain't about the police not living in the neighborhood. It's about the people who finally make over $24,000 a year moving out of the neighborhood. They don't, they're the ones who don't live in the neighborhood no more. They're the ones who ain't circulating their dollars in the neighborhood no more. The first thing people do when they get some money is dip. And that's my point. You, 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 now you're on the right street. How do we get our people back into the communities and build on a better community than what we have right now because our community is not safe for us no more. Yeah, it is. How do we change? You know not safe? Let me tell you who's not safe. The people who don't know their neighbors. Why don't you know your neighbors? I know all my neighbors anywhere I live. I'm making my business. You ain't got to say something to me. I'm going to say something to you. Once I know my neighbors, it immediately brings down the chance for somebody trying to attack. Or take advantage. People don't know they know no more. Everybody's so scared somebody's gonna take something from them. They scared to 
open up to anybody. I ain't worried about you taking in from me. I know how to defend myself. You ain't about to be walking all through my house, but you can have a conversation with me. We can sit out here and talk. That's, that's, and a lot of time, that's what a lot of people want, a little conversation. That's a beautiful thing. Glad you so why to the 4th of July. Hold on, let me get to something right quick. You talk about <laughs> Mandy. I appreciate that. That's a own business. But the what? Coney Island, the liquor stores, and all that bullshit you putting money in. I said the Coney Island. I said Taylor made, which is owned by the same person who owned Mandy's, which is Al Taylor. Okay, that's two places. All the the money that is spent with people, and what we're talking about is building up each other and trying to build up uh, entrepreneurship in the, in the neighborhood. And if we can, but if the places I'm money, talking about too, to spend money with each other. But the I places get, I'm talking about too, the Coney Island yeah. in my neighborhood contribute. They contribute. And the stores. Scott yeah. Castles contribute. Pearls yeah. contribute. All the stores in my neighborhood contribute. Because they're getting rich off of you and none of them live in the neighborhood. When it get to that one point, we about. You buffering again. What you say? I said the money doesn't circulate from business to business. What we talk about. We talking about money remaining in immunity for a certain amount of time and not happening, except for I a man. You know I what I'm saying? You said to a certain extent, but again, this is what I'm saying. To a certain extent, you 100% right. But two things could be right at the same time. I could be right here and you could be right up next. But what I'm saying is, okay. most of the time, the people who talk about what needs to be done in the neighborhood don't live in the neighborhood. You don't even know who owns these businesses. We do, in my neighborhood we do, because we all got relationships like that in my neighborhood. I can't speak for nobody else. I can only speak for where I live. But I'm just saying, the same people who doing these armchair politics, all these armchair revolutionaries, you won't live in the neighborhood either. So why don't we listen to you? You ain't credible enough to give your opinion. You the one scared of them. I, I ain't scared of them. I, right. I disagree with you on that because that that would be like that would be the equivalent of saying you moved away from Detroit. You don't live here. How do you have the right to talk about what's going on in Detroit? Because so I can't agree all, with you on that. Look, first of all, I'm still below poverty level. That's number one. Number Man, talking about I'm just talking, I'm just talking about straight up being class, from Detroit. You. It's a class issue. This is not a race issue. This is a class issue. This is people with money trying to tell people with right. money what they should do with their money. No, we're not telling them what they should do. We're saying we need to have that education available for people because what you're talking about, that's the reality, yes. But just like I just gave you that example that you brushed over and I want to go back to it, which one? The point you're trying to make, you saying that people that ain't in the city no more because they done moved out of it don't have a right to be able to speak on it. No, I'm saying that not the, there. People, the people don't want to hear it because you don't live there. Right, I understand, but I'm telling you, how you gonna tell me you don't want to hear it when I did, I grew up in that same shit. I grew up in that neighborhood. I'm still in that neighborhood. Right. Yeah, I don't live there no more because I can't get the things that other neighborhoods offer you because of you making the type of money that you make. You live in a new neighborhood. You live outside the city, but you telling me because I don't live in Detroit that I can't tell a motherfucker in Detroit what's right or wrong or what I think they should or shouldn't be doing because that's how I got the fuck from out of there. But my point is, I don't have a problem living in Detroit if Detroit can afford me the same things that I get in other communities, which is education, safety, good product because you named quite a few great places to kick it for but you didn't name not one restaurant i'm sorry restaurant not one grocery store that sells quality products you didn't name uh, not so one place it's a grocery over store on shame it's a grocery store on shame between uh you named 94, one store 94 is between 94 and actually they give away food you don't want paper it's all right food, but right? how many stores in the how many stores in the hood have poor products in it that they give into that community? 
It's not even the same I quality as when you listen to my little poor product. I don't know nothing about no poor product. My point that, is, that's you can't opinion. say because somebody, you can't say because somebody not in that community anymore, they don't have a right, or people gonna think that they can't tell them how to do things. No, you got a right to say community. whatever you want. You got a right to say whatever you want, and what you're saying not necessarily wrong, but this is what a person's going to say because they're going to give you enough respect. People respect money. So just for the fact that they know that you are from Dexter and you went from that to where you are now, they ain't about to argue with you. They ain't going to go back and forth with you. They're going to tell me when you leave. They don't want to hear that shit from you unless you telling your immediate people who have access and influence from you and to you. Those are the people so who are going to listen to you. So in 2020, guess what? We got a great thing. The way we able to see one another and communicate and have this debate right now is through mm -hmm. these type of apps and these type of things. My whole point, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, it's a group of people that we're not going to touch. And the reason we're not going to be able to touch them is because Right now, they're at a point in the game where, and I said this before on a podcast, and I real brief, quickly said again, people always fall into three categories. Because you, you said it's all a game, if I'm not mistaken, when we talk For about sure. just life in general. For so sure. the game that is being played, and, and people fall into one of these three categories at every point in their life. You either know the game is going on and refuse to play it, you know the game going on and you play it to the best of your ability and stay in your lane, or you that motherfucker that has absolutely no clue whatsoever that the game is even going on. <laughs> you all right. I'm trying I to agree. do right now, I all agree. I'm trying to do right now with this opportunity that we have, and that's why, again, I can't thank you enough for coming on here because I love for somebody to give us that raw emotion and, and be able to tell it to us right from the hip. That's why you my nigga, excuse that. <laughs> but my point is this, with this opportunity that I have, if I can touch somebody who know the game going on and just don't know how to play, and I can teach them how to play, that's all I'm trying to do at the end of the day. And You're I right. feel like it's too many of us that know it's a game and we just don't know how to play it. And I always right, so go good. back to that AA. I'll go back to that AAU with the little boys hooping and not knowing how to shoot free throws and everybody saying, damn, nigga, you got to make your free throws. Make the free throws. And nobody ever stopped and say, okay, well, you got to take your feet and spread them this far apart. You got to do this with your wrists and blah, blah, this, that, and other. That's how you teach somebody how to shoot free throws. All I'm trying to say is we want to get to a point, and our goal is to get to that point where we not just saying, motherfucker, make your free throws, i.e., this is what you need to do in your hood. We trying right. to put a platform together and we trying to be in a position where we say, look, this is what you need to do. Number one, when you get that extra $200 you're spending on the J's, instead of buying the J's with the 200, okay, you buy you one pair, but next week, instead of buying a pair, maybe you do this. That's what we trying to do. Are we going to tell right, everything out there you don't deserve no J's and we got three pair? No, <laughs> that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, hey, man, before you get a collection of J's like this, get you a crib or start you up a business. Open up your own liquor store in the hood. And I know that ain't realistic right now because they're not going to let us do it. And those are the type of things that we want to talk about and get past and educate on. So look, Cody, look, you right. But here go the one thing you just did and this is the perfect example of why they don't get they don't get the information. It's a lot of times it's about delivery, right? It's easy yep. for two smart people to talk to each other when both of them have some type of foundational knowledge of what they are already speaking on. But can you simplify that complicated idea enough where everybody in the room understands? That's a challenge. I, I, me personally, my, me personally, I feel like that's something I work on and I I, I can do. Uh, and that's the education on this side of it. Like you said, I will even check myself when it comes to some of the advice I give and and how I give it based off of the audience. It's right. again, you know, exactly. we can equate we can equate it to sports and sports. 
We've seen it. We've seen a football coach literally grab mm -hmm. a player coming off the field that made a mistake by the face mask, yelling and spitting in their face, and that player go over there and, and get as far away from the coach as they can, and they come back out there the next time around, and they knocking niggas dick in the dirt. But then you got a player right. who you go at and you yell at him like, how dare you yell at me? My mama watching me on TV. You got me fucked up. You a racist asshole. I ain't playing for you no more. Right. But I'm not even so, talking about that extreme. I'm talking about, let's say I'm talking to a guy who only work on cars. This is what he do every day. He got a job at a brake shop, but he also, he also fix people in his neighborhood cars in his grass, right? I don't speak car. I don't know how to spell you can. But if I can figure out how to get this idea of entrepreneurship over to him in a language he can understand, like, no, nah, bro, instead of doing this shit, you know, y'all with a police finna come over here and be getting you fast, and you messing up how your house looks, how about this? My man got a little space over here. It's big enough to fit like one car in the front and one car inside of it. What if we went half on the note and then you can start bringing them cars over here? You can still get your side money however you get it. You can go to people's house and fix that shit. But what if I got us a little space? Now I'm talking car because he understands when I speak car. But I'm also teaching him. Right. So a lot of and times the we... people you talk to, they don't speak your language. You got to figure out what language they take in simplify that idea and then spoon feed it to them in their language. Once they get a hold of it, they'll turn it into whatever it's going to be for them. But first, you got to be able to figure out how to get them to not only, you know, in school, you didn't have a class called reading. You had a class called reading and comprehension. A lot of people read the shit on the page. That don't mean they understand what they just read. Exactly which is why they want you to do the book report and all of that. And you bring up another great point that I was trying to make um, right there is, yes, you got to figure out how to have that conversation with them. And, and I appreciate that that's where we at with it now, because at the start, it was like, fuck them. Don't even have no conversation with them. And that's what I was saying I can't but agree listen, with. But look, but you got to understand, too. I still feel like that, too, but the select people. It's select people who I have immediate access and a certain amount of influence with. Those are the people whose language I'm trying to figure out. I'm not stopping random people on the street. We not on the same type of time. We ain't stopping random people on the street. Ain't that the objective? That, that ain't the objective at all. I think the objective here is really talking about people being a little more responsible with what they got instead of wasting the shit on things that don't really be value. And I mean, when I say value, I mean like long-term value, not something that's going to depreciate over time. I mean, looking fresh today, is, is, that's okay. I'll, I'll interrupt, I'll interrupt real quick here. Yeah. I'll interrupt, uh, interrupt here real quickly. Because I think exactly what both of y'all, because both of y'all are right. And I think when you say, you know, and, and this is something where, you know, I'll, I'll assess myself because I, I use, I've used the same verbiage. When I say you wasting your money on shit that's not important, a lot of people in Weavey's defense going to look at that and say, whoa, whoa, they're going to immediately take defense to it because it's the delivery. When we say, hey, man, you got this extra money. Let's talk about some ways we can make a come up off of this. Ah. That one little statement going to look differently than me just flat out because what's happened right. is, and we're not talking about you and Weavy specifically, but we're talking about the class mm -hmm. and the people who, you know, lack of education or whatever it be, it's in the delivery. Because if I go to a Weavy type of person and say, look, man, stop blowing your fucking money on Jays and this, that, and other, and I got on the pair, he like, nigga, you hating. Fuck you. Eat a dick. Excuse my language. <laughs> this is where we at today with this podcast. Right. But if I say, hey, man, I see you got a little bit of money, man. You know what? Let's, like he said with the dude in the car yard, we have to watch how we come across with it. Uh, and we all can learn from this because it, it, it was like it just hit me like a, like a meteor. 
you know, it's in the delivery of it. You know, if I come to you and say, hey, let's let's come up with a way where we can get money. I see you got a little bit of extra money. I know you under this, that, or the other, you know, trying to figure out ways to make it more realistically. And I'll go back to again, because we talked about reading and comprehension. So in America, and especially in the hood, educators, i.e. Uh, non-urban uh, educators, think that young black men are hard to educate. They don't know how to comprehend what they read. That's the, that's the fallacy that's out there. And the reality is, and I say this all the time, you have to make it interesting on their level for them to understand. It's like on good times when Michael didn't know what a vestibule was or a nook. You know, they were saying shit that he ain't never heard of, so he couldn't answer the test questions properly. And everybody know he was the smartest kid in the projects. So you guys bring up some great things here, and I love it because, it, uh, you know, it gives us a chance to get that perspective from two different ways. But I think we both just learned something here or had an aha moment, I like to say, where I can truly say I think it's in the delivery of how we go about the education that we can work on as the people who are trying to make that change. One more thing. One more thing. Now, here go the thing about the devalue thing. I know that you're right. Buying a new cost a lot immediately devalues when you pass off. We ain't even gonna get into the interest that they be killing people with. But what value do you put on self-esteem? And that's a great point. And I will say, I win this, this but not the question is, look, the question is why that item give you self -esteem? Because where we with yeah, that's where we fucked up at. I know that answer, but I'm saying, why are we fucked up like that? Because it's associated with you. success. I just heard you. But why are we fucked up to think that that item is going to make us feel good because it's associated with success? No, look, you going to, that's the wrong process. All the parts was right, but they was in the wrong place. I get the item. I feel better because now I look like the people who I identify with who are successful because they right. dress like this too. Right. I'm dressed just like LeBron right now, head to toe. LeBron is successful. I feel successful. I feel good. If I look good, I feel good. If I feel good, I play good. When I play good, they pay good. No. Which I know this this seemed like a left turn here, and, and my female listeners out there don't come for me. But the point that he just made is the same reason I feel like in our black community that our black women feel the desire to wear some of the weave and some of the things that they do is to try to look like look like uh, other races of women who, as kids, and this is where I want to go with it. As kids, right. we have been taught to think that being black is bad. Now we'll get in the race here for a minute, Weave, and, and hear me out on this. You know, they've done studies, you know, uh, Jane Elliott, as well as uh, I've seen something else just recently where they took some kids, and this was back in like the 70s, and boys and girls, and they would show them a little black doll and a little white doll. And, and Every kid, and these were all black kids, every kid identified and, and looked at the white doll as being good and pretty. And us as a people sometimes, and that's why we have this big uproar that we have right now in our society, is because as a people, we know that that's not right and we're tired of the way we're being treated because we, number one, feel like they are better than us self-consciously with things like this, exactly what we're talking about. And it was easier to right. identify when I mentioned the black woman, because we know right now, I love my black queens, but they get the most criticized and get the least amount of love ever. And we find them, and I think we've approved my point, I heard clapping. We find them wanting to look like something other than what they normally would look like in order to feel pretty. Or successful. But here go the only thing. Man. How do here we all get past this? You got the only thing, Cody. 
and he got the only thing in your day, it was about looking white primarily. But now they want to look like the girls who is the Beyonce's, the City Girls, the Nikki's, the Cardi. These are the black girls. So they go above and beyond out their way to try to look like these girls because in their mind, these girls have the guys who they think is cool and successful, and these girls are successful. But the thing I be noticing is the same way that my guys are buy some J's or some Cardi's, the girls will think, do you know how much real women cost? Oh, that yeah. shit is we were $1,000. Yeah. And that's not Think about four or five pair of J's. Mm-hmm. That's not top of the line. $1,000 weave is not a top of the line weave. You got people out here getting three to $5,000 weave, though. Exactly. But that? even Beyonce oh. or even City Girls, where did they get it from that they think that that's how you look? My whole point is everything that's going on right now we have to know and understand mm-hmm. how did we get here in order to start making the changes that we need. It ain't no different than if you grew up eating a, eating a particular type of food and then you find out the person that make that food is one of the most racist people in the world. Once you're educated on that and you're not going to give that racist person your money no more because you've been educated. All we're That's trying to do though. is educate people on some things. I mean, and maybe that ain't the best analogy. But there's some things where people will draw the line in the sand off of at every level. It's some Listen, things people just ain't going to do. If that was the case, Tony, then people had no black people talking about they was Christians. What was that? They talked about they what? If that was the case, if just you know the true history that you were participating in was solely created to oppress and destroy you, then we wouldn't have no black people in 2040. That's not true. And I'm going to tell you why. We got a relative in New Jersey. I won't even give credit. Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. She, she blesses slavery because it brought, it brought us Jesus. Now, the, the, come on back. Now the I'm not I'm not I hurt your soul. Give him, podcast. Don't give him too much trouble. Listen. listen. Uh, I'm just happy he got on bottoms. Listen. Now the now I'm sorry about that damn finish your statement. Let's backtrack a minute. Now we talked about the to do this earlier, and I want you to see this. The the dial test we're talking about is um, from Dr. Kenneth Mamie Clark, and they they originally did it in the '40s. Then they ended up a bunch of people have redone it since. And I'm gonna play a clip, and it's just a minute long. And this particular thing is showing you what. Um, segregation does to people. It would make them view not only themselves, but other people. That's, that's kind of what the experiment was getting across. I'm going I'm to share my screen right now. Okay. All right, so I'm a full screen the video, and it's just a minute. I don't think this is the right screen. Is the black doll? Oh. What is the doll? Yeah. Which doll is the Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Stall is the nice stall. Stall is the stall. Why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. 
Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because he's black. Which doll looks like you? Yeah, which one looks like you? That one. Alright. Leave the garage open like you do. I don't even believe that shit. You ain't gotta believe, believe it. That. It's what it is. I don't believe it. They didn't tell kids what to say before they turn camera. Anderson Cooper. They've done it several times. Question for you. It's the doctor. The, in some place the, in the background. It's all. The uh, study been the study been done several times in different countries and here. Forties they've been doing it. You I ain't gotta believe, believe it. it. It is what it is. They ain't gotta trick you into thinking it. Why would they I tell mean, them to do that? Do you have to do your own study? I bet you won't come out like that. I bet money on it. You can do it yourself. No, because I don't know who you I don't feel like you I mean, the the test test. I'm not going to go out my way to prove it to you. That's just what it is. I don't believe that's a real thing. But I also don't believe statistics, so. That's mm -hmm. me. I also don't believe in statistics, so that's just me. That is just you. Right. I ain't never took a Pepsi challenge. I ain't never been asked to pump for nothing. I ain't never feel out of sense. So what, I don't exist? I'm sitting here? No, that don't mean you. I mean, what the hell are you talking about? You could take the sense of I don't know nobody who has never participated in no statistical study ever in my life. I do. As a matter of fact, I got a phone call about one the other day. Yeah, but you part of you part of any system. Okay. So they know you. They call me. They call you. Call me. I don't even know. That, I don't know. He was just. I did one. Time. I did one for the first time this year. I, I participated in one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like. You part of that system, so that I, you will be exempt from that part. You know what I'm saying? How many people can you call on your phone who's not part of that system? I don't know. They probably don't answer the unavailable number it came from. I answer <laughs> everything that I put on my phone. Well, they need to get the same people who give credit to stuff because them motherfuckers show them find a way to call me. But we're not about to. we not about to try to force you in a uh, uh, understanding that the, no, the test been done a couple times. I ain't believe Same results every time. I don't believe it. And hence why we have some of the thought processes that we have. And all we're trying to do is if somebody out there is listening today, is look at it and say, hey, why do we act the way we act? You know, people don't understand why we, we act the way we act during the riots uh, after George Floyd got killed and they, you know, they, they painted, you know, I, I'll get onto a race thing here, but they painted the blacks as rioters and thugs. And it was just as many as you say, Weavy, that was just a class thing. Anybody who thought they could take advantage of an opportunity because opportunities aren't readily afforded to them will take advantage of a situation like that. Unfortunately, it's a lot of black people that usually fit into this category of not being uh, what we consider to be upper class. But back to my point, when people say, why did they act like that? Why are they so violent? It's because of the way we've been treated in this country and in treating us the way they've treated us, they've taught us. It ain't no different than like we, when we talk about street codes and different things that we just know. We know them because we were taught it. And within those teachings, we just saying, hey, self-consciously, some of us as black people who tend to be the ones most in poverty, you've been bamboozled and tricked and you don't even know it. 
you've also been tricked into not realizing that the amount of, you know, bad quality of food or too many liquor stores, whether they taking care of you or not, a lot in the neighborhood. When you go outside of the neighborhood, you can't find those places. So it's a lot of things. We just, we like to go back sometime to try to understand how we got to where we are. And I think within that, all we trying to do is say, hey, don't continue to look at it like this. Look at it this way. I'm not going to say because, because here's what we have a problem of doing. We say, well, because you're not looking at it like this and we know you are in poverty, you're an idiot. It's your fault that you're there. It's like, no, yeah. it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. And when yeah. we're trying to explain it to you and you get so frustrated, yeah, we got to do a better job of delivering it. But the bottom line is, we can't fault the people right now for where they are. Us as a whole, for the, for, the, for the 60 or so years that we've had these so-called freedoms in a country that's existed as long as it has, and for us to, you know, still be shunned, when you watch the news, they only going to show you the, the bad stuff that happened in Detroit. I guarantee you that if the news dug hard enough, they could put on a report every night off of the white people that get off the bus on fucking eight mile and Grasher and come into the neighborhood and buy their dope and go back out to their community and rape, rob, and pillage their families because now those uh, opioids are a, 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 a national pandemic even over the current pandemic. But it wasn't that in the 80s when it was crack. When it was crack, it was just we're a bunch of thugs and animals. But now that it's opioids and it's affecting motherfucking the suburbs out here where nice people live, it's an epidemic that we got to get a hand on. So my point Mm -hmm. is, we are tricked into having some of these back and forth with one another without realizing that we've been set up to fail for so long. And all we want to do on this podcast is give great examples of those situations and talk about and try to come up with solutions to help us do better. So do you have a book list? Do we have what? A book list. A book list of? Things people can go read. Yes, we offer stuff like that on the the website. Not so much books you can read, uh, and that's why we shout out to our listeners because we want to get financial Uh, advisors. We want to get money people on here, but we also just want to be able to have people give input, you know, even like yourself today, because you bring interesting, you know, you, you able to, you know, speak your mind in in an intelligent way. You know, somebody might not agree with how you saying it, but they can't argue with most of what you saying. So through these many ways, I, I, I feel comfortable knowing that even you today, when you walk away from here, we ain't changed you as a person, but we probably no, open no, to at least one thing. I agree with everything y'all saying. I'm just saying, if you really want to understand the situation, don't argue your point of view. Put yourself in the point of view of the person that you will be arguing with and try to figure out what would this person say to me and what's the right counter response to what he would say. It's like playing chess. When you move, before you move, you need to go, okay, I do this. What, is he, what pieces is available for him to move? And what might happen with each move of each piece? That's why it takes so long to move. You go up to different variables in your mind. But the reason why I'm asking if you got a book list, if y'all have something like a book list, uh, a list of videos, and then have links to those on your website or and or your YouTube page, for people to look into in their own time. It ain't gotta be nothing free. It can just be, hey, Napoleon Hill, which dad for that. Check out this video. This is the dial test that we was talking about. It's a video of it on YouTube. Click the link for the video. Or even Red is getting in stocks and stuff. Get in the link to the to the hood bubble now that you got me. So people can watch these podcasts, because they ain't gonna understand anything y'all saying. They not, especially when y'all be talking to each other, because y'all two smart people who already got a fire foundation understanding of what I'm talking about. You gotta act like you talking to somebody who ain't never this shit. Y'all. 
This shit is like listening to Japanese. I don't see my damn show, you understand? So I got a good book for people out there since we talking books, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You read that book. That is a fantastic book to talk, to uh, to read in order to get your point across. And basically the, the, the message of the book is about first being kind and then talking to somebody in their interest because you have to talk about their interests in order for them to respond back to you. In order for you to get what you want, you need to talk about what they need. So that's kind of what the book is up and where the book is going, like four chapters in. So I'll tell you, I ain't never read it before I had it and I started reading it the other day. So that's something that I'm on that I think is a very good book for people as far as communicating uh, to people, wanting people to kind of uh, listen to what you got to say to come based on what you can. You need to talk to people about what they're interested in. And then you'll get, you get a better That's right. how you get that. That's why I'm saying about dealing with the cars and the mechanics. I'm coming to him with a business proposition for him to do more of what he already do. So all that I'm talking about is how I can help him, how I can help him, how I can help him. If I can get him to listen, tune in, what I'm getting out of it ain't really gonna matter because he don't feel like he gets so much in your hand giving me a little bit. My little bit ain't gonna hurt you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you, dog. I'm dying to this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll tell you a book. It's called The Master Plan by Chris Woods. Mm-hmm. It's about the guy, he was 16, 17, he got an artificial at the gas station. He ended up killing the guy, getting life in prison. And while he was in prison, he met another youthful offender who was teaching himself how to computer code and was right. teaching GCD classes for other youth parents who had life. And because he was so impressed by this other young guy, he decided to educate himself. And he ended up getting a pardon, giving back his time, coming home, and he's a successful entrepreneur now. Hmm. But it's a lot more to it. It's called The Master Plan and the author is Chris Woods. Chris and of course, you right. said The Master Plan, you're breaking up. The Master Plan. Okay. So the reason it was called a master plan, when he met this other young guy, he wrote out a master plan. So it was like, get a car, get my GED, lose weight, don't gamble, things like that. And he sent it to his judge. And every year, he would cross out things that he accomplished and then add new goals and reset the plan to his judge. So every chapter start off with him reciting the master plan and then go, oh, I lost 40 pounds, scratch that off. New goal, no more chips. And that's part of the new plan. So every chapter he do that. He all the plan, he crossed out, he did, and then he add new things to it. Okay. Hell of a book. I'm with it. Who you say it was? Huh? What'd you say? Who who did you say? Chris Wilson. Chris Wilson? Yeah. All right. I asked Carly what his book. Oh, I hear you. He ain't saying nothing, though. No. Can y'all hear me? I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I thought y'all was saying I wasn't saying nothing. I'm listening. No, we, I said, what's your book? Oh, what's my book? Uh, I I don't know the author of it, but it's a simple book. Is Who Took My Cheese? And the premise of the book is... Have y'all heard of this book? I heard of that book. (laughs) So basically, the premise of this book is about a couple of mice, and um, they go out and they go through the trials of tribulation of trying to find their next meal. And the purpose of the book is teaching you not to get complacent, meaning that the sweat, the, the ways that you found your cheese yesterday may not work today. 
And of course, it's a book that's, you know, based on, you know, selling techniques, but I feel like it relates to every part of life. And the prime example is today us having the conversation. And for me saying, you know, just like with the basketball analogy, how we communicate today compared to how we may have communicated, you know, 50 years ago, compared to how we need to communicate to the people that we're trying to reach, who, when we saying, hey, <laughs> you know, you don't need to be spending your money on Jays, when we got four or five pair, we, we have to change the, the verbiage on that. Get that message across another way. And, and like I say, the book was, you know, you figuring out how to do things in another way. Just because it was, you know, the, the cheese was here, but that cheese got old and it ain't no good no more. You had to figure out a new way to do it. And we right now, I feel less a society and I won't even put it as a race thing, but I just know our particular race seemed to be the one that is getting shitted on the most. But I'll say, um, you know, that's what I want to try to accomplish with my circle, which my circle is a little broader because I take my two cents and I get on my soapbox on Sundays. And I, anybody that'll sit up here and listen, I try to give my point of view. Like I said, I've been enlightened. I will uh, continue to figure out the best ways to get that message across to whoever I need to get it across to. But within that, we also have to continue to have people like yourself to come on and speak your mind and give your point of view. And, and we challenge other people to do the same thing. Because as you see, you know, we, we there's, there's nothing but love here amongst us. We all are family, blood family to be specific. So of course there is no love lost, but how do we get this message across so that I feel like I'm not, the things I'm uh, on the soapbox about, it's not for me personally, because I don't feel I'm gonna see those changes in my lifetime that I'm looking for. Are we gonna be in a better place, hopefully, than we are now through people like myself and people like both of you being so honest and upfront? Yes, I feel like my son or maybe my son's son will, will see life differently and will have a different uh, experience than I had. You know, I love and appreciate the experiences that I had, but I'm sure everybody on here can say, when we look back on some of the things that we did, that we know we damn well wouldn't do to today, but when we look back on them, yeah, they built our character, but man, if, if we had it to do over again, we wouldn't have did some of the shit that we did. We wouldn't have put ourselves in those situations. So if we can, with that experience, plus where we at now, can keep some youngster from going through that, then I feel like I accomplished something. Like you said, I ain't gonna get everybody because some people don't give a fuck about what I'm talking about. And I get that, but for the people that's out there listening to us, that's all I can try to effectively uh, continue to, to make a difference on. Uh, help me make this platform bigger. That's all I would ask so we can get out to more people. And you know, I, I love when somebody come on here and uh, speak their mind. We don't have enough people doing that. And as you can see, mm -hmm. Weezy, this is an easy platform. It don't take nothing but an email and a smartphone and you on here with us. Uh, and I love new people because you don't know nothing about a uh, podcast world from the inside. You can't get up from your chair when you ain't got on bottoms and walk off. <laughs> <laughs> In my defense, I totally forgot that I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, like I'm saying, uh, the, I agree with everything y'all said. I just, it be the delivery, dog, and sometimes these ideas that y'all be saying to each other, it sounds simple. Because y'all already, a lot of the stuff y'all talk about, the stuff y'all is doing. So y'all start to do these different things, and now you repeat it because I'm not talking from this side, like, look, dog, what you got to do? Boom, 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 boom. But you can't talk to everybody like they already understand. Some people, they just don't understand. So you got to figure out the same thing. We said the same thing. I'm saying simplify the message. 
Just simplify this. As far as all the other stuff, I didn't know there was so much money out there to be got without doing what I was doing prior. It's way more money to be got doing other things. But if don't nobody never crack the door for me to look at me and see all the money, why would I, how would I know it was there? But it is there. And sometimes, uh huh. I said it's definitely. Yeah, but I'm saying like it's a endless amount of it. You gotta realize what the, what the, what the world just did. They just released over a trillion dollars just to give away. They could have been here that. So that Even... means it's somebody somewhere who don't want you to have shit. Now the question yeah. is, is you gonna let them not let you get shit? Because I'm looking to still get some shit. I ain't, I don't like the idea of somebody making sure I ain't got shit. And you want to make yeah. money that, and they... I'm coming to you shit. They gave you that money so you could spend it. But all that shit ain't me doing was hungry because that let me go over some money over there. Oh, yeah. And I'm coming back for some more money. I didn't know it was over there. I didn't well, know you could just say, here, get in that. We do it. We got it. It's cool. You like it. I'm like, whoa. Whoa, that is crazy. And don't get it. Don't get confused. The same people who buy stuff that he value, they spend their money in other ways too. They do. It's a lot of little businesses starting. It's a lot of people coming together. This is a group of guys, I wouldn't call a group of guys, like three or four guys who are getting serious about trade stocks. As they should. Yeah, but it took, listen, I say it as a joke a lot. Corona. The only thing that impacted my life is more than corrupting drugs. This should have been like a blessing for a lot of poor people. Mm-hmm. It is. And I ain't mad at people for, for getting that extra 600 To be real with you, because I always argue, why wouldn't you giving them that in the first place? Because I felt right. like you be giving people enough to live on. And you but got people. Really don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. And that's been my argument the whole Check time. You out. ain't giving people enough to live on. Check this out. Before I moved out of Detroit, I was working at a factory five days a week, 45 to 50 hours a week, making $11.50 an hour. That means my check in two weeks was $736 after taxes. After two weeks? Yes. I can move forward on my bed with my heart, nigga. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. And they think you got too much money. And they think I got too much money. And that's that's so, that's what I'm saying. When you got somebody who's been living like that for years. When they can't even afford to live by themselves, they got to live with somebody else just to have a couple extra dollars in their pocket. Hell yeah, they're going to lose their mind when they get a couple extra dollars in their pocket. They don't even know how to watch it. We should have been smart enough to live together in the first place so we could have stacked our money right. Or we should really use this time to take our power and everybody who has simple work who complaining about the equipment walk off your job. Walk out. Right? They ain't about to do that because it ain't about the money. When you essentially it's about, about, the, about the benefits. It's about no, the it's benefits. Not, it's about people who people don't be worthy of having X amount of money. Right. They complain about people who they feel like don't deserve to have as much money as them, but they can really take control of all of this and walk out right now. Mm-hmm. You don't have to make another car. It's another car right now. Walk out of the plant right now. But they, they, you a a bump. they banking on us to keep buying those cars. Right, but here's the thing. They keep making them, the, the contract ain't with the, ain't with the customer. 
The contract is with another company to produce, right? Right. If we all walk out, we make you build that contract. So mm-hmm. you have to hold on to it. You have to suffer the consequences of the not being able to the bargain as the employer, right? So yeah. really, the worker has all the power. And I say this because, you know, all the people are going to go, yeah, that was you in the house. You know when people don't have a clean union? They don't even know what a union is. Because they don't know what a union is. I worked in small parts of places and factories for years. I've never had a union at none of my job as a labor. It ain't until somebody go to somewhere where they in a union and sit in the meetings and see what a union rep does for the labor that they go, oh, hell no, I ain't never working with a union. Mm-hmm. Unions is real, dog. I know, I and worked at a company. the labor has the power. Huh? These departments get unions. Chrysler got a union. Uh, right. But I'm saying we were talking about how the essential workers do something. But yeah. the essential workers, they shouldn't be the main advisory pay. Because they, they are essential work and they are risking their health. So why aren't they demanding mandatory hazard pay? I don't care if you already make 27. You should be making 35 hazard pay. They don't want to walk off. Exactly. So how am I going to fight somebody in on fight with them? We don't want to join you. And they not even, and even if you did get some people to walk off, you would never get everything. Because it's just some people that ain't with it. There's always exactly. going to be somebody that ain't with it. Exactly. So that's why I say focus on your circle, your immediate people, because you can't get everybody on the same page. What do you say to my to die and you need to watch all the time? Just because he from your, just because you got the guys from the same hood, don't mean I'm on the same thing. Just because he represent what you represent, niggas out there can pay. Oh, I, I, I. I didn't buy a yeah. pants, I didn't buy a shirt, I didn't get the new glasses, I didn't have a new furniture in my house. My money just. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's me. I already with me. I ain't gotta get no, I ain't gotta get no clothes to for myself to see me but everybody ain't like that. That's and what that's we talk about the whole time. The truth might be value that I might value, but how much do how much value you put on self-esteem? Because a lot of these people need that shit because they feel they don't feel good about themselves. That's that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. We don't need things for self-esteem. And I think that's where the hang-up is at. I don't need a new shirt to feel good. That comes from the house. Right. But that that that's I think I think that comes from us learning how to love ourselves. Cause like even with the money, the money thing, I sat here last week and I said I teach all the young people that I encounter in my family about investing in finance. Kanea said, You ain't taught me. I took her straight upstairs, put her on the whiteboard, and she had three straight days of 30-minute sessions about money. And then she made her a watch list, and we bought some stock. Yeah, but that's an everyday thing. You know what I'm saying? That ain't a, that's an everyday And then, this is what I'm saying about the house. She don't live there. No, she don't. So you can show her all that. When she comes over your house. But if every day she lives in a house where people are not financially literate or responsible, my communication with her ain't limited. No, I don't I, I keep up with it. And that's that's that's, no, that's man, on me. That's saying. on me to do. That's on me to do to keep up with it. Because yeah, if I don't keep up saying. with it, she probably won't get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She won't understand yeah. it. She she might grow up and think that she need wigs every day. She might grow up and think that she need weave in her hair and gold wigs or whatever. She don't need to think that. My my objective is to prevent her from feeling like I'm good enough. In my own skin, my own hair, my own flesh, I'm good enough. 
I agree. And we should be able to walk around like that. But it starts in the house. True. I, I it agree with that. You know, I don't think nobody can disagree with that. Most oh, definitely. Yeah. It's it's the uh, and I think so, we got to learn how to say that I'm good enough. I don't need all this. I don't need to impress. Who the fuck are you impressing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's, I get lost in it because I, I don't do it. Like, I don't feel like I need to do that. I don't feel like I need a certain kind of car. I don't need a certain kind of shoe. I don't need a certain outfit. I don't need any of that shit to define I'm who you, I am. Uh, I'm going to interrupt for a second. I think I said this earlier. I'm going to tell you why people feel that way. Because in you this did. country, America has always flaunted its wealth. The wealthy yeah. people, I mean, before we had Instagram and, and, and Snapchat and all of that, you know, back in the 80s, it was the lifestyle of the rich and famous. You know, when yeah. Cube said it best back in the 90s, he was like, how dare this country be mad at people who don't have the same resources that they do, but want the same things that they have. And they not right. sharing it. You know, <laughs> most rich people not sharing. It's kind of back to like what Weavey was saying on how we make sure we deliver the message. Right. People want to look like other people that they consider to be successful. It's unfortunate that that's what we have been brainwashed into believing, not as a whole, but a quite a few of us have been brainwashed to believe that. And, and that's where we have to say, hey, let's stop this. How do we do better? And if we are going to be successful, let's be successful within our community of our, the people we care about, if I can word it that way for you, Weavey. Because right. right now, my concern, like you said, it ain't for every, every person. I'm just trying to touch the figuratively touch the people who uh, can hear my voice. And to answer your question, uh, Dan, I think that right now in this country, uh, the people who have not had anything are tired of not having anything. And when the opportunity to get it come, i.e. the extra $600, which got people on average bringing home about 900 a week. And for somebody who you know, I know people who <laughs> was going to work 40 hours a week, man, and was bringing home, you know, per week, 300, maybe $400 per That's week. So huh? That is crazy. Right. So we talking about, you know, we, we, we can't be mad at people for saying shit. Why would I go to work and work 40 hours a week and bring home you know, and I'm saying taxes and all of that. I'm saying, why would I go back to work for a company who you now understand because you've had the time to sit here and reflect on your life that you don't really mm -hmm. fucking feel them no more? Because anytime you take that, I'm sorry. How about the fact that they don't even value me as an employee? Right, and that's that's my point exactly. I agree with you. So we the. You know, we're not going to solve all, all of it today, but I think the, the point and for the people out there listening, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to start doing a little bit of the wrap up summary because it's 10 after eight and we started around this time two hours ago. Uh, but just to really hit home on we 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 can be better within ourselves in the sense of trying not to depend on others for us to be successful, whether it's mimicking what they doing or trying to look the way they look. And when I say that, looking at other ways to be successful, you know how to fix cars, you trying to do it in your yard and that ain't really the way to do it and you catching flack and getting all these fines, you know, hey man, let's get together. You got this knowledge. Let me show you how to take this and uh, let's get this little lot over here. You think it's expensive. We can get this shit for $600 a month, man telling me you can't make enough money to pay, you know, your half on this, and then we're going to do this over there too. You know, that type of thinking, I love that because you're thinking outside of the circle. You know, I love that, you know, people are getting this opportunity to get this extra money, and we on the same page because we saying, hey, now you're getting this extra money. I don't care 
whether you deserve it or not. You getting it? Here's what you can try to do to make that shit last, because the government ain't going to keep giving you this handout. And at the end of the day, the Athena Protection, Soapbox Sundays, our goal is that. Not why you getting the 600 or the 900. You getting it? Here are some things that keep you getting that plus some every week if you do this with it. You know, and I think that's where the message has gotten lost sometime. And, and you guys, I, I love how you gave point, counterpoint. Um, we have to do a better job of that, most definitely. Because, yeah, people yeah. right now, we get frustrated. It ain't no different than we've been seeing this for years. You know, income tax time come in the hood. You see us go from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, struggling to the lifestyle of the rich and famous for a good, you know, six to eight weeks after that income tax roll in, you know? So this, this has been a challenge in the community for a long time. You know, by June, most motherfuckers back broke. They don't make it to the 4th of July with that money. Yeah, but, but you got to think, you, know, you got to think, um, you got to be, I you mean, know, you and rich. People like you, rich, uh, you know, all the who in that type of same field of thought. Y'all got to be like touch counts, right? Like you said, AAU. You go to AAU, you taking your stuff in the play across the board to see who you got to be playing against. So you can know what they're going to work on when y'all go back home. So y'all got to be like touch counts, except for my opinion, our family is so big. We just talking about literally hundreds of people, at least 100 people. The talent is under your nose. It's going to take y'all to filter through and see which ones is ready to be grabbed now and make them your project, for lack of a better word, because I'm telling you, one, two, five of them, they ready. They just don't know they ready. They got all the energy, they got all the smarts, they got all the creativeness. And they all, it's just sitting there. They don't know what the hell to do with it. Right. That's kind so of like when I talked about, about the game. When I talked about the game of life, you hit it right on the head. We we trying to we trying to ideally touch those people that know there's a game going on and uh don't know how to play and they want to learn how to play. That's where we at with it. Because like you said, we uh, you know, as people know the game going on, they're like, I'm not playing. For whatever reason, yeah. lack of knowledge, yeah. whatever it is, they just, they're not playing that game. I don't care. I ain't, you know, rather it feel like dealing with corporate America or whatever it is, I ain't, I ain't doing that. Because that's where I'm at with it. I'm like, I don't want to, in theory, I don't want to go and punch nobody's clock for 40 hours. I don't want to do it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, and you I'm definitely don't want to do it. You definitely don't want to do it with the person you're doing it for. Don't even value your contribution to the company. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and we see that all the this time. This is my about the self-esteem part. Even we deal with self-esteem. Everybody on here got kind of self-esteem. But I'd be damned if I feel stuck. If I feel to get to the point where I feel like I'm messing with myself for a bunch of motherfuckers. First of all, I never seen these places. I don't even know who really on this shit. I'm only dealing with the truck person who I who got the office that I want in. That person don't even make no decisions that I hate them. They not making the decisions that they tell me that I've made. Somebody else to make that decision and told them to relay that to me. So what am I gonna do to put myself in a position where I can sustain myself? independent and not have to deal with that. Right. And That's what is the question. What I tell right. everybody who right now is off work and getting this money, I don't even talk about work. You do what you want to do with your money. My question is, have you figured out what you're going to do when it's off? Are you going to go back to work? Are you about to work to school? Do you have a passion for something that you like to do in your free time that maybe we can sit down and talk about it better that we can turn this shit into Income, that's the thing I be talking to my people about. I don't care if you ain't got a dollar left in this shit up. 
did you come up with an idea to not be in a position you was in when this shit started? That's great, and that's exactly what we're doing. It just sounds like a bigger scale because of some of the things that we're talking about, but we all yeah. got the same goal. And I would, I would, I would, I would be comfortable in saying that most of the people that we know, not all, <laughs> most of the people we know, <laughs> conceptually have the same thought process. And you, you, you know, you said some weird that I like. That you said, you know, you getting that that money, but. You ain't went out and Jay Z it up, you know. You 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 know. Right now, you just putting it aside, trying to figure out the next move. It's like uh, that's a start, you know. Like you said, it it ain't gotta. You know, we say stocks or we say this. It don't necessarily have to be that. We 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 know it ain't. It is is more than one way to skin a cat, as they like to say. Uh, just the fact that sure. that's people's mindset, and if they listen to us, even though they might not feel comfortable getting into the stock market or something like that, that just seemed too mm -hmm. big time. You know, the fact that people getting this money are thinking of things to do, even if it's something as simple as, you know, my man knows how to work on those cars. Dude, having a shop, he finna quadruple his business as opposed to trying to do it. You're going to have people who wouldn't fuck with you because they ain't dealing with no backyard mechanic, as we like to call them. That backyard mechanic a beast, but I'm just not going over there because that ain't how I want to get down. But I'm going to fuck with him if he got a shop. You know, he got a lift. He ain't just jacking my car up. My car ain't sitting in his in his driveway, in his hood, waiting on him to work on it. Uh, that I'm worried about it being there. You know, he got a nice secure mm -hmm. lot where he can put my car inside of a gate and all of that. Yeah, that's that's you know that's that's helping that person out. And that's a mindset. You know, if it's if it's a nail salon, hell, I don't care if it's a liquor store. Yeah, those guys that you mentioned at Scott's Castle and whatnot, being cool in the community. And I fuck with Scott's Castle when I'm over there. Those guys is cool. But like Red say, they don't live in that community. They may help but they only help in so much because they got their own concerns and their own families they want to help. So if you want to open up a liquor store, you want to open up whatever. But within those things, all we're trying to do is say, have some type of goals in life. And we ain't saying it just to say it. We talk about the things we talk about and try to get the examples and get the different people on so people can say, hey, I can do this. You know, it ain't just... It ain't just cuz, cuz, like you said, in most people mind, they think me and Reg, and I, I'll say Reg, they think he rich. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's big money grip right there. Well, look, those who have been to your house, they know you ain't a swag over those things, man. But so, you know, I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you. I don't even care about sharing money. My man is very and this it ain't got nothing to do with not spending no money. It's something. Get my driver's license, which I ain't had since 2014. Get my CDLs. Once I get my CDLs, I want to start going to truck driving school. Once I finish truck driving school, I want to pay out of my own pocket to get my heavy equipment operating license. Not because I want to drive, drive the truck, because that's just something good to have in my weapons mm -hmm. I don't want to work with co-workers no more. The, the first thing you have to do is identify who you is. What do you like and what don't you like about where you at right now? And then figure out, okay, I don't like working with co-workers, so where can I work by myself and make them? Okay, I like driving. If I'm driving, I ain't got to have no co in the car. So how, who makes money to drive? Oh, I know some truck drivers. Joe you know, Martin told me about this. I'm like, oh, damn, truck driving for me. He's like, man, this is a good job, man. I've been doing this for a while. I think you might even be good at it. And he started telling me why he thought I would be good at it. Man, the nigga, you know what? You're right. That's all I need to do to try. I can't be by myself for a long period of time. I do like to drive, you know what I'm saying? And if I can get nothing like that, I'm canceling up three things I don't like about my current job. Exactly. So then, right. I love it. If I get tired of going on the road, who knows, I might get a woman, I might have a baby, and I might be tired of this stuff going across the country. If I already got my hands in the equipment, I'm ready, license, which I pay for in my pocket. 
then I could do something like this and say, yeah. And I could live the rest of my life doing that if I want to. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to figure out who you is, what you like, what you don't, and what you might be good at. And then talk to somebody who either already in that field or somebody who might know somebody in the direction you want to go and try to map out a realistic logical plan on how to get it to where you're trying to go. And that's and a great you know how to do that, Download a chess app on your phone and start teaching yourself how to play chess. Because as you learn how to play chess, you will learn how to think. And the point you bring up, and that's something that we're going to do moving forward, thank you again, uh, is I like how you just went through a, a game plan that you have, which is a damn good one. I mean, anybody listening right now, regardless of what they may think of you, can't sit back and say, that ain't going to work. You know, the naysayers, you know, it ain't nobody out here who could look at something like that and say that that's, you know, that's not a good idea. You know, you, 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 you touched on a couple of key things. Number one, you know what you got to do before you can even go do this. You got to get your license straight. Then once you get your license straight, you take in the class. Then once you take the class, or I mean get the certificate, then you take in the driver's class to be able to drive the heavy equipment. That's a plan. And that's all we're trying to do is help people to come up with a plan. And with that being said, you know, we offer you know, we open up the doors of this show for people to come on here and talk about what it is they promoting. But also, you know, for people, because everybody don't have a plan. You know, everybody don't know. You know, you you assess you assess being a truck driver or, or having that CDL. You assess that on you you you've done some real good things within that. Like I say, you made the plan, but you also know that you're gonna be spending a lot of time by yourself, and that's something that you don't have a problem with. So knowing yourself as an individual is so important and then coming up with a game plan. So, you know, even though at the beginning we laughed and talked shit about Jays and whatnot, you are somebody who most definitely can relate to a different level of people because of where you at right now. But I got to tell you where you are where you at right now, even though financially it may not be someplace, and I know you don't need no pep talk from me, but it might not be right. where you want to be financially, but your thought process and, and, and your ability to be able to come up with something you think is going to be successful, you whether it work or not, I'll tell you it will work because I've seen it from Marlon. I've seen it from two other cousins who just recently, uh, Nardo, little brother, uh, both his little brothers got their CDLs, one driving local, one over the road. So I know the shit that works. So great idea, yeah. great plan. And I, I want to I wanna offer other people to come on here and talk about their ideals within reason. Because, you know, sometimes people feel like until they get to a certain point, they don't want to discuss things. And I get that. But do you know how many people could listen to what you just said? Maybe they ain't getting a CDL to drive, a, you know, big heavy equipment. Maybe it's getting their heating and cooling license and they're going to work on furnaces and or maybe it's going to get plumbing or whatever it is. You know, going back to school, you want to be a nurse. You want to be whatever it is. We just want people to be thinking about moving forward to get what they want out of it. So we all are alike here on this in the sense that that's where we at with it. We all are way smarter. And I, Weavy, I challenge you because you're smarter than you give yourself credit for sometimes to me. That's just my personal opinion. You make the same like this this uh, grizzly Adams looking dude over here is smarter. He, he's a smart <laughs> young man, absolutely. That's why I fucks with him. But uh, don't discount yourself. You're a very intelligent person. You just, uh, you, you just uh, like to verbalize your thoughts a little differently and there's nothing wrong with that because too many times we tend to judge people based off of how we feel they should or shouldn't be doing something and who the fuck are we who are we we might be the fucking idiots and the other ones are the ones that smart and got it right yeah we might feel like we doing better than somebody else and if that comes across i know for me i challenge myself every day to not not give the impression that i'm better than somebody else 
I just took advantage of the opportunities that were afforded to me at the time that they were. And most of us do that because that's just how we was born and raised. But uh, on the podcast, we want more people like yourself on here because you you inspire somebody today, my brother, trust me. You, you inspire sure. somebody as well as you most definitely gave me a, a, a aha moment on, on the delivery on how to approach the, the, the topics. And, and, and especially when you're talking to individuals that you, rather you know them personally, but you understand where they are with it, you know, because I think that's important as well. But man, most definitely some 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 good feedback today. I hope hope y'all uh, you know, can continue to do this as we move forward with these podcasts. Uh, we we you know we've kind of calmed down and mellowed out because I think we're just tired at this point. Um, <laughs> I heard we we asked you how long are we gonna be on here, and you tell them long as you want, <laughs> you know. So. Uh, we but you know, I long. listen to podcasts. I listen to three-hour podcasts, but I know we all sure. we all different time zones. You know, it's only five o'clock here. You know what I'm right. saying? Yes, yeah, so. it's, it's super early where I'm at, but I understand. But uh, yeah. hey, y'all yeah, got yeah. it. Like I said, download the chess app though. I suggest that strong. And that's if anybody that's... who ain't got no chess app on their phone. Download. And you know, it's funny because. That that analogy of chess, if if you can't equate that to life, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, and and I learned how to play chess. I was a grown ass man, uh, never really played chess, and I had a, a a nine and a ten year old teach me how to play chess, and they what? understood they understood the concept of the game. Uh, and because they had been playing it for both of them had probably been playing it for a couple of years since they was younger and they knew how to move the pieces and everything, but they didn't know how to think pieces ahead or moves ahead. So once I understood how the game went, so we played probably two, three games and they got me together. Then after that, they was like, man, we can't beat him to save our life. I'm like, well, first of all, y'all kids, y'all can't think like I can think because I'm older. But the reason I'm beating y'all is because I'm thinking so many moves ahead, which is the game of chess. So to break that down uh, to exactly what I praised you on, Weavey, is you playing chess right now with your future. You move so many moves sure. ahead from where you at right now because your mind is on this, this, and this is what I'm getting out of the way right now because this is what I'm going to be doing, and I know this is going to work for me. So, right. Kudos to you for bringing enlightening us with that chess analogy because that's so real, man. So real. So many right. of us, uh, you know, Reg is another chess player in theory. You know, his mind is always going. He's always thinking about that next move, which in turn is how his son has become the the genius thinker that he's come. You know, your your, your dad Reg was always on some. For people don't know, I'm talking about Dan's father. He was always thinking about something. We used to kind of laugh and be like, man, he tripping. But, you know, he was always thinking about that next thing. And I want our listeners to, I want you to understand that you can never be too old. Uh, you, you're not never too young. As we see with uh, Tamika's youngest daughter, Kanea, teaching her the stock market and understanding that. You know, we're going to look up five, 10 years from now and be like, man, she took that and ran with it. You know, <laughs> look up five years from now, we even got a trucking company. Like, man, for sure. didn't see that coming back in 2000, but that damn Corona got him <laughs> on the right track. So Listen, whatever it man, is that you want to do. Is baking soda and cocaine. So, so whatever it is that anybody out there, you know, and we talking about legal things, don't get to 600 and be trying to get a package. I, I feel like I'm, I'm in not. a place in my life where I can tell, I don't care what level you think you is or not on, that ain't the way. You know, you might get a couple of good summers out of it. You might be fly as hell, but we know personally that that ain't the way. So- But look, Coley, Coley, don't tell them that. Tell them the truth. It's way more money in this. 
Exactly. And you're right. That's what we got. We got to point out the, forget the, the jail one. part. Forget the, door, forget the getting killed part. Forget the jail part. Because a lot of y'all might just feel like, hey, I'm tough enough. But it's way more money over here, man. Trust me. Ain't yeah. missing no meals over here. I'm about to start a diet on the first because I didn't got fat messing around with the room. <laughs> Hey man, I could afford to lose a couple of pounds myself. Corona ain't well, kind of nobody in that aspect. So much money on the other side. You just gotta figure out how to get over here. And for some for a lot of people, because everybody on here done did this at some point, you might have to leave your comfort zone. You might have to get up out of there for a minute. You right yeah, there. The results, man. And sometimes it takes time. You gotta groom yourself to these positions. And you gotta learn how to maneuver in some of these positions. And some a little bit of time, but once you get it and you don't know. So I, you know, I think that's all people gotta just be patient, learn how to maneuver in these situations they're trying to get into. Cause you know what I'm saying? You just gotta have the know-how to get it. And that take a little bit of time. But a lot of times you're gonna have to leave the crib. And I'm just talking about Detroit. Dog, it's, it's, it's other places where they gonna start you out where we wanna end up, just in the pay scale. So a lot of people yeah. feel like making 15, 17 dollars an hour, I got a good job. Well, where I live at, that's starting pay. That's the starting pay. That's what you pay, walk, that's entry level. Yeah, that's going into a different economy. But that's what I'm saying. Sometimes yeah, yeah. you, we all did it though. You went to North yeah. Carolina, only moved, I moved. Sometimes you got to leave yeah. to get right. Now that's up to you what you do once you get right. But, and that's a good point you bring up, and that's kind of where we, uh, you know, we started out there. So you know, I love when we go full circle on the podcast. Um, you know, that's. You know, we all have that and similar. And for people who've moved outside of the city um, to better themselves, that's kind of what, what they go through. The challenge is, and I'm not saying everybody needs to go back and, and try to save the city, but I just know I got a lot of people personally still in the city. And if that's where you want to be, all I want to do is try to help you think about doing things differently if you're going to be in the city. But I agree with you. Sometimes it does take, and unfortunately, I personally will, will say, you know, the economy we in is not the best. You know, the, you know, we, 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 we live in Michigan and Metro Detroit, and it's not the best economy. You know, being out west where you at, uh, things are popping. You go a little bit further west to the coast out there, it's even more crazier when you look at the amount of money that's out there circulating. Uh, but you know, spend really the amount of time because I, I used to live out there, so I, I know about it, and I agree with you. Uh, and that, you know, and, and for you to, and, and without getting into details about you, but if you can go out there and do it, I feel like it's a lot of people who second guess themselves and think they can't. They can't, you know, because uh, I was I was shocked when you moved, I was happy because I knew that, you know, it was going to be bad opportunities out there for you compared to the opportunities you was getting here. Uh, and I'm, I'm so happy to see us working out the way it is for you. And I agree with you. I challenge others that's out here listening. Put yourself in, uh, you know, if you got the opportunity, we talking about these stimulus checks, this extra 600. I don't personally think it's about the end. Don't quote me on that. I don't want you to go buy a pair of J's because Coley said it, 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 it's not about the end. But I will tell you right now, in July the 12th, I don't think they're about to cut that faucet off. They may make an adjustment to it, but they can't cut it off. And the reason I say that is because what we start off every show with is uh, talking about the corona numbers and where we are with it. You know, they're trying to make it seem like the economy is strong and everything's doing fine. Why wouldn't they? Why would the powers to be tell us we fuck and this corona ain't going nowhere no time soon? We'd have pat we'd have pandemonium in the streets. We'd have people, you know, losing their shit. You know, so keep fighting, yes, uh, but be smart within it. 
That's all I say. Yeah, they um, I think they're gonna go from six to four. That's my prediction. We're gonna get a second stimulus check instead of it being 12, it's gonna be 17. And I think they ain't gonna cut the false off, but they're gonna turn the power down a little bit, and we're gonna go from six to four. That's what that's my prediction. Because the thing about the numbers is you can go on YouTube or Instagram. It's a lot of nurses, male and female, making their own blogs, talking about how they're being told by the administration, anybody who comes in with corona-like symptoms, label them as having corona. This is where the inflation of the numbers is coming from. Not to mention people going to get tested. How do you know that they're not ingesting you with the virus? If you ain't got no symptoms, what you going to get tested for? And why are employers mandating that you go get tested? Right. Especially in jobs whole, where you're dealing with the general public. Are they trying the to spread virus? Huh? You want to say that's just a whole the other theory that podcast, we don't want to get into. I like that. We we, <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad, my we, bad, we want bad. you we want you back and, and that's 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 another topic because uh that ain't a that ain't a far fetch one at all. I also heard <laughs> this: if you test positive multiple times, they'll include all those like they separate numbers. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, it's some skewing in the numbers, and but that's that's like I said, that's kind of like the jobs report. If anybody know about the jobs report, those numbers aren't. So let's say I build Burger King got Davidson and Dexter. They say, okay, that's a job. We're going to get 20 jobs out of that. But then since the Burger King, they're the construction people going to be there. So that's another 20 jobs. And then um, they'll say, well, that's going to bring some traffic in. And that'll be to do the landscaping or something. That's another 20 jobs. And Burger King might do a contract for the wizard to be clean. That's another 20 jobs. So it's all inflation. Rather it's corona, the jobs, or anything else, that's the government shit to me. They always inflate nuts so they can stack money in places and move money around uh to where they need and, to be. And that's exactly why I said I don't like I don't I don't respect statistics because of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, I know y'all that's a whole nother can of worm. I got a deep dive about that too. But hey, one thing for sure. I'm on unemployment, baby. Hit me up anytime. <laughs> you will do that. That means you can let me go. Got a little extra over there. Excuse me. Nah, I'm I ain't driven. I'm so nervous to do it. Man, I ain't putting on no shorts. It's going to be a good day. So listen, man, as we wrap up, man, uh, I know we thanked you a few times, but any final thoughts from you, uh, Weave? Download the chess app. Even if you don't understand how you play, play a little bit every day, it ain't going to help your game. It's going to change how you think. You're going to start pausing before you take make a decision. You're going to start going, wait a minute. So if I go over there, damn, that means I got to bing, 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 bing. And a lot of times, it'll stop you from moving. So great point. it ain't just about what you think. It's about how. A lot of people don't know how to think. You got to learn how to assess the situation and then calculate all the different variables and then choose your best route after that. Right. Dan, That's any it. final thoughts today, man? For me, uh, be mindful of what you're doing with your money. That's what I would say. If days out here, you can get it um, and keep it. And that's pretty much what I'm about. I'm trying to keep as much as I so uh, don't uh, think about the, the choices you make financially because they can help you in the long run. I think we need to do a little bit of long term and with our money, stop looking for that instant gratification. I agree. Awesome. So for me, I kind of talked about my closing thoughts, but I'll just share again. Uh, number one, uh, today, if nothing else, we exhibited how we can have a disagreement on something and be able to communicate 
and still have a disagreement on a particular topic, but walk away with a high level of respect for both people's opinion. And the reason I bring that up is because of the continued amount of violence that we're seeing in the community. And I just feel like we all are very similar, but we three different age groups. Uh, so I feel like we're getting a, a pretty good perspective here, but I challenge our listeners and even us to go out there and continue to be able to have dialogue with somebody and disagree on a particular topic or something the way it was said and still be able to walk away without it being a violent situation or would it not being able to continue to be an intelligent conversation or being able to, I don't want to even say intelligent because that might feel uh, like the wrong word, but to be able to have a constructive conversation with one another. We've done that today. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. podcast and yes, we, you know, we can always just hang up the phone. Uh, but too many times I feel in our community that we can't have these type of conversations, whether we agree with somebody or not and walk away if nothing else, trying to have a better understanding of why the other person felt the way they did. I always equate it back to the, the shoe and the color of the shoe. Was it turquoise and gray or was it white and pink? We know that based mm -hmm. off of how people's brain think that they're going to have a different opinion looking at the exact same thing. And I won't even say an opinion, but a different in their mind fact about the same thing. So as we continue to try to figure this thing of life out, and as we continue to try to be better around one another, understand and look at what we just did today and know that you can disagree with somebody and y'all can still coexist. You can also put yourself in a situation financially, you can put yourself in a better situation with a game plan. So just sitting down and coming up with a game plan. Don't be mad if the first one don't work. Shit, don't be mad if the first five don't work or the first 10. Just keep trying. It's like the game of chess, as we be said. You know, learn how to think. Learn how to think about moves ahead. If you're only worried about what's going on today and you're not already trying to figure out what you're going to do in August and September, and hell, if you like me, Excuse me, you're already trying to figure out what you're going to do going into November and December? Then shame on you. You know, that's where you want to try to get to with your thought processes. Uh, continue to be the strong men that you two are. I love you guys for that. And we don't say that enough, you know, and it don't, we, we don't want to say it to the point where it doesn't have any meaning to it. But I'm talking about real love for people who are always real with you. You know, so th those are my closing thoughts. And of course, uh, before we go, man, we, we got so into it today, we just kind of jumped off the porch and took off running. If we mm -hmm. could do one last thing as we close out, Dan, let the people know how they can get in touch with us. Right now, they're going to have to get in touch on social media at a thing detection service because the website is on destruction. So uh, until we get that, it uh, should take a couple of weeks to get that knocked out and we'll be back online. You can always also reach us at 1-800-951-4866, 800-951-4866. And I got two things before we go. Candace's birthday is tomorrow. Wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday. We all appreciate you. We love you. And, uh, you know, we appreciate everything you do, especially me. I, I appreciate all the support, love that you give me and making sure I'm straight and not losing my mind or going on and doing these things to people because I uh, I have my moments where I want to <laughs> act. But aside from that, um, the books, let's recap. Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. We also had uh, Who Moved plan to Jesus. By Chris what was it? The Master Plan? The Master Plan by Chris Wilson. The Master Plan by Chris Wilson and Who Moved My Cheese? And that book is by Spencer Johnson. Those are the three books that we recommended this week. Thank you for uh, bringing it to us and uh, us uh, some books that we could share with everybody. Hopefully, uh, somebody reads a lot of them. 
Hold on, y'all don't tell them y'all Instagrams? Everything is Athena Protection Service. Instagram, YouTube, everything. Reach us on any social media. And Twitter. We can all, can be reached on all those at Athena Protection Service. Good job. Yeah, that's what's up. All right, but well, thanks again, everybody. Uh, all right. I'm out. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening. Be safe. All right. For sure. For sure.